well, first because the people elect them, and that elections in a free or not so free society depend on information, kind of um, the the information that is generated and it's shared and how it's shared. Um, every time you have a revolution, the first um, one of the first buildings that is being seized is the building with the TV station or the, it used to be the radio before the introduction of TV uh, because this is how you um, acquire or grab legitimacy from the people. You just tell them that there is a new sheriff in town and your military uh, rule. I think at the age of social media It's more complicated, but it's still clear that for the government to claim that it has the support of the people, that it has legitimacy, to act as a representative of the people, if there is any pretense of democracy, it needs to, to, to demonstrate some communication with the people. Um, Social media is more porous. Uh, you can control access to certain sites. Uh, you can try and monitor people's accounts. Of course, there's surveillance and questions about um, how secure our access to media is. That, that I think has a lot of impact. I think we're going to see fewer and fewer people uh, sharing their views on social media because um, they're fearful of the implications of that. But it's clear that the government fears, that this government fears the people by looking at its attacks on the media and also by looking at how the media is being hijacked and uh, it, it's not an original idea, but I read it yesterday. I think I was looking both at the New York Times and at the Washington Post um, during my flight. And someone said that you can differentiate between a dictator and a democratic ruler by looking at um, the mainstream media of that particular country and seeing how much of the media is generated or focuses around that person. It says that there was no precedent in the past few decades where so much of the media, so many of the headlines were all generated around the president and that that in itself is worrisome even if some of the headlines are critical of the president. The fact that who we are as a nation, what we think about, what we are, what we oppose, what we're told is important, it's all framed by one person's action whether it's a policy statement or a tweet, that's a worrisome sign in the democracy. So that's something that we should fear from a government that fears us and therefore tries to control the message. So the, the critical take here is in saying even as our media, including the mainstream media, criticizes Trump, we should be wary of the fact that this is all the media is covering. So there was a major human rights activist, youth organizer, who was assassinated last night in Palestine. It's no, not even the, the um, kind of more uh, radical media. The social media uh, reported it. There's very little um, attention, definitely, to global issues. Um, and. And I think that that is, it's an indication that this government is afraid of the people, uh, but it's also a wake-up call to us not to be caught 
into that dialectic of uh, letting this administration dictate our politics because it's a trap and it's a diversion and uh, and while this game is going on we're going to have another um, executive order unleashed so at the same time people are criticizing um, Trump's tweet, or he generates a story about the White House, uh, the, the uh, Trump Tower being um, wiretapped. Uh, we have um, a DACA activist, of, 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 um, one, one, uh, who, who was a student waiting on the renewal of her uh, DACA status, give, give a talk and um, being detained. So we have a, a major student leader working on immigration issues being detained. Very little attention in the media because we're all caught up talking about, um, you know, this this new um, ludicrous allegation that should be investigated.